This time on Wild Case Files. Do dozens of dogs have a death wish in Scotland? Investigators figure out why these beloved pets make their fatal last leap from this 50-foot bridge. Something strange is happening. Beneath the imposing tower of Overton House lies a scene of mystery and misadventure. Without any warning at all, dozens of dogs are suddenly leaping to their deaths from the ancient Overton Bridge. At least a dozen dogs have leapt from the bridge, five in just six months. Is this just a coincidence? Willie's reports catch the attention of animal behaviorist Dr. David Sands, who comes to investigate. It's one of the first projects that I'd been asked to do some research in that didn't just involve dogs uh, behaving badly. From an animal behaviorist's point of view, it was sort of a story that said, why? My first job when I came down was to kind of just get a feel of the dimensions and the overall geography of the area. I wanted to measure it. I wanted to see the thickness of the bridge, the stone, the heights. I was interested in what the lead up was to it. And what people thought of it who were walking the dogs in that area, no longer had been going on. This was a story that uh, had a lot of human emotion. I wanted to get back to the science, uh, and I knew there would be some logic in, in, uh, for the explanation. Overlooking the scene of the distressing incidents are the spires and turrets of Overton House itself. When it was first put to me that were dogs committing suicide from this bridge, I actually laughed out loud. That's where we're humanizing the behavior, we're becoming anthropomorphic. Dr. Sands draws on his years of canine expertise. With a sniff of a good mystery, he follows his nose for a more scientific answer. We know from research that the dog's sense of smell is something like 100,000 times stronger than ours. The kind of scents that dogs will pick up, the strong smells, are things like uh, mammals, squirrel scent, mouse. Anything that's sort of almost incontinent in its sense that wherever it goes, it's leaving a trail of scent. A non-working border collie has a very strong instinct to do herding. When they can't round up sheep, they'll round up skateboarders, joggers, children. They'll try and circle and bring the family together. And I've even seen puppies that have never seen sheep in their life be exposed to sheep and immediately try to round them up. That's a genetic behavior that's locked in and it's wired in. Ben's herding instinct may explain why he ran into the turret, but why he jumped over is still a mystery. So David set up an experiment with a range of dogs and bottles of scent, from squirrel, mice, and mink, animals all known to be in the immediate vicinity. We found out that the bulk of the dogs headed almost directly towards the minks, and if that kind of scent was around the bridge, it could have an important influence on the dog's behavior for wanting to explore over the bridge and go beyond uh, the normal path. One of the first things that I did when I came to the bridge was get myself down onto the dog's level. What I found was the world uh, was blocked out by the stone. Perhaps the dogs are simply unaware of the danger because they cannot see there's a drop on the other side of the wall. Dr. Sands believes that in some cases, the dog owners may exacerbate the situation. See, look at that, you see, you pick the baby up, you show them over the bridge. That's natural human behavior, isn't it? To show what's on the other side. And imagine if they had a dog now and they're looking over, the dog's gonna say, what are they looking at? You know, that's quite interesting. You know, I want to know what's on the other side. What's causing them to look? There were three 
powerful factors for why dogs were jumping off the bridge. But in order of significance, I would put the dog's sense of smell first. Secondly, and perhaps the most subtle of the important factors of influence, would be the cue from the owners themselves. This natural desire when you're crossing a bridge to want to look over to the other side. Thirdly, the structure itself. The line of sight is blocked, and for them, it's just over a wall, and I'll get to what's on the other side without thinking that's a 50-foot drop. <laughs>